Okay, this is the second video in Chapter 7. And in the first video, we just talked about what a mole is. It's just a, um, a unit used to count a large number of something. One mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That's a huge number. It's 6 with 23 zeros behind it um, of anything. Now, think about actually counting that number out. One, two... Three, how long would it take you to count to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd? That would take a long time. It's not a very convenient way to count. And if we think about what we usually count when we use Avogadro's number, it's not convenient at all. Have you ever seen an atom? Have you ever seen a molecule? When we count in chemistry, we cannot literally go 1, 2, 3. We know there's so many of an item by its number. A mole of something is 6 times 10 to the 23rd. Um, but it's not the most convenient way to count uh, as chemists practically in the lab. So how do we count? Chemists often count using a convenient method called counting by mass. What in the world does that mean? Well, let's do an example. Let's say you go to a hardware store. And when you go to a hardware store, you need a lot of nails. You're going to build a house. <coughs> If you know that one nail weighs two grams, and let's say you need 2,000 nails approximately, which way would be faster at the hardware store? A, to count out 2,000 nails. One, two, three, four, and by the way, don't mess up. <laughs> or would the other way be easier? You know that one nail weighs two grams. You need 2,000, so 2,000 times two? Yeah, 4,000. So you go over to a scale and you dump out a box and you weigh 4,000 grams of nails. And that will give you about 2,000 nails. Well, obviously that way is going to be faster. It's more convenient. And you don't have to sit there and count items. Now think about something like an atom that you can't count by items. One, two, three. You can weigh atoms, though. If you have a large, large sample, you can weigh how much that sample weighs. If you know how much one atom weighs, and you know how much the entire sample weighs, can't you figure out how many atoms of that element you have in the process? For example, if I have 6,000 grams of nails, and I know that each nail weighs 2 grams, how many nails do I have? Well, right, I have 3,000 nails. Likewise, if a chemist knows how much an entire sample of an element weighs, and they know how much individual atom of that element weighs, they can figure out how many atoms they have. All right, so chemists, we count by using mass all of the times because individual atoms are too small. When we count using mass, there's different units we can use. If we're talking about the average mass of a particular atom, atoms are very small. We're going to be counting in terms of the AMU unit. We discussed this in Chapter 5. An AMU unit is an atomic mass unit. So when we're talking about the mass of an atom, we typically use the AMU or atomic mass unit. But what if you have lots of atoms? Well, if you have a lot of atoms or a sample of um, an element or a molecule that you can see, you're not going to weigh on the very, very small atomic mass scale. You're going to use the scale of grams. That's what you've been using in the lab all along, isn't it? Yeah, that's a scale that we can manipulate and we can see and feel with our hands. That's a large scale. It turns out if you have a mole of atoms, it's going to weigh enough that you can typically weigh out on the gram scale very easily. So if we use the grams as our mass, and we have roughly the mass of one mole of atoms, instead of the mass of an atom, we're going to have a mass of a mole of atoms. We're going to refer to this mass as the molar mass, the mass per mole of atoms. The units for molar mass are grams per mole. How many grams we have per mole of that atom? It turns out different atoms weigh different amounts. So let's look at a comparison of uh, weights using the, the AMU, the atomic mass units, versus the 
the gram scale, the molar mass units. Let's look at hydrogen first. So here we have the element hydrogen. If you look on the periodic table, you're going to see that hydrogen's average atomic mass, the one below the, the symbol usually, is 1.008. It'll just say 1.008 on your periodic table. We'll have hydrogen, atomic number 1, average atomic mass, 0 0.008. Some of your periodic tables that you like to look at might say 1.01. .01. It just depends on the periodic table, 1.01. .01. Um, but this here, that bottom number, is the mass. It's the average mass. And if we were talking about one atom of hydrogen, that number that you will record will be 1.008 amu. It's the atomic mass unit. It's the mass of one atom of hydrogen. However, if you're talking about a mole of hydrogen atoms, how many atoms do you have if you have a mole of hydrogen atoms? You have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms. If you have a mole of hydrogen atoms, how much does that mole of sample weigh? Well, it turns out the number at the bottom of that box, the average atomic mass, is not only an AMU unit, it's also a gram scale as well. So if you have one mole of hydrogen atoms, it weighs 1.008 grams. So we're using the same number, but if we have one atom, the unit's AMU. If we have a mole of atoms, the unit will be grams, and the number will remain the same. All right, so we know that one mole of hydrogen atoms weighs six point, or 1.008 grams. How much does a mole of magnesium atoms weigh? It should be the same, right, because it's the same number of atoms. No, because remember, the atoms weigh different amounts because there's different numbers of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. So because the nuclei are different and the number of electrons as well, the overall atom weight from element to element will differ. If I have a mole or 6.022 times 10 to 23rd of atoms of magnesium, it will weigh 24.31 grams, about 24 times more than a hydrogen atom. If you look on the periodic table for sodium, sodium's average atomic mass is 22.99 AMU. One atom of sodium weighs about 23 AMU. What if I have a mole of sodium atoms? That's the same thing as saying, what if I have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd sodium atoms? Well, if I have that, then I will have 22.99 grams. So notice the numbers here are the same, but whether you're talking about the atom or the mole, the unit will change. All right, let's think about this concept now. Here's a multiple choice question. It says, which of these is not correct? Here I've got for you um, the box on the periodic table for the element carbon. So you go over, you find carbon on the periodic table, atomic number 6, average atomic mass 12.01. All right. A. A says the mass of one atom of carbon is 12.01 AMU. Is that correct? Yeah. Because AMU is the atomic mass. It's the average atomic mass. And we see that that is 12.01. .01. So that's correct. We want to know which one's not correct. Let's look at B. B says the mass of one mole of carbon atoms is 12.01 .01 grams. Is that correct? It is correct. One mole of anything will give you a molar mass, and molar mass is always measured in grams. So it's this number, instead of AMU, in grams. So that's correct. Let's go on to C. C says Avogadro's number of atoms has a mass of 12.01 .01 AMU. What is Avogadro's number? Avogadro is a mole. If you have a mole of atoms, would you use the atomic mass units? No, this answer is not correct. You should use grams for a mole. So D is actually the correct version of that statement. So when you have a mole, you use a gram. 
When you have an atom, you use AMU. Okay, now let's, let's think a little about this. The next question is a calculation question. It says, calculate the mass of 2.4 moles of carbon. All right, now mass can have two different units. It could be AMU or grams. How much of the sample do you have? Let's look. Here we're given that we have 2.4 moles of carbon. Do we have an atom of carbon? No, we have moles of carbon. When you have a copious amount of carbon atoms, aka moles of carbon, you're going to use the gram unit. So we actually, when it says to calculate the mass of this carbon, we're actually wanting the mass in grams. So let's set it up. We're given that we have 2.4 moles of carbon atoms. How are we going to calculate the mass? Well, we were always going to use conversions to do these unit differences. Here, a mole is a counted number, and we're going to convert it to mass. We have the molar mass of carbon, because one mole of carbon atoms, we know this is the molar mass of carbon. The molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. So if I put my mole of carbon on bottom, I know that one mole of carbon is 12.01 grams. So I do a conversion quickly. Now I'm given moles. So I've got a moles on top. Notice that I put my moles in my molar mass conversion factor on bottom. And I converted two grams on top. All right, so let's calculate it. Uh, we've got 2.4 times 12.01. Here we have two significant figures in our um, starting measurement. Somebody has calculated 2.4 moles. Remember the conversion factors never have significant figures. So when I go to calculate this, my answer will have two significant figures. <coughs> Sorry. So I've got 2.4 times 12.01. With two significant figures, I'm going to round this to 29 grams. Makes sense, right? More than twice. Twice, or two moles would weigh 24. We've got 2.4, so it's a little more than 24 grams. So this brings us to our second conversion factor. The first conversion factor we looked at was Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number says that they're 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles in every mole of sample. So we can use Avogadro's number as a conversion factor or a ratio in, in calculations for solving from one unit, unit to the next. Now we've learned about something called molar mass. Molar mass is the number of grams for every one mole of sample that you have. If you have one mole of carbon, it weighs 12.01 grams. If you have one mole of sodium, it weighs 22.99 grams. These numbers are found on the periodic table of elements. So we have our first conversion factor, and now we have our second. In this <coughs> chapter, we're going to be using both of these conversion factors to solve problems. So make sure you understand what Avogadro's number and molar mass conversion factors are. Let's do some more practice problems with them though. All right, now you're going to want to always have a periodic table out with you. Anytime you're ever studying chemistry, your best friend's going to be that periodic table sitting right beside you. So as you go to do these conversion factor problems, converting amounts of the reagent to a different quantity of the reagent, um, always have a periodic table. Let's look at the first question. It says calculate the number of moles of atoms contained in 3.52 grams of aluminum. All right, now what are we given in this problem? We're given grams of aluminum. What do we want to calculate? It says calculate the number of moles. So we want to convert the grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum. 
Do we have a conversion factor that has both grams and moles in it? The two I just showed you are the ones we're going to continuously be using. Yes, we do. We have molar mass. Molar mass is always grams per mole, and it's found on the periodic table. So whenever you're converting mass to moles, you use molar mass. So let's do, ju let's do just that. Let's convert mass to moles using molar mass. So we always start with what we're given. We're given 3.52 grams of aluminum, our mass. We want to convert that to moles of aluminum. So we're going to use molar mass. Molar mass is grams per mole or moles per gram. Where do I put the grams, on the top or the bottom? Well, I want to get rid of the grams. So I've got a grams on top. I'm going to put the grams on bottom. And now I'm going to put my moles of aluminum on top. Now I'm going to give you a kind of a hint here. Usually when you do all these conversions, if you have some other unit against a mole, you're always going to compare it to one mole in your conversion factor. So you should never have any other number beside a mole if you have a different unit. The one is always going to go by the mole. Now what we want to know is where, where is this number going to come from here? One mole of aluminum is how many grams? That's going to come from the periodic table. That is your atomic mass, that bottom number. So how many grams is a mole of aluminum? We see on the periodic table the number 26.98. Okay, 26.98. So we have 26.98 grams of aluminum for every mole. So now I've got my grams on bottom, or top, my grams on bottom. Those will cancel out. So my only unit left is moles of aluminum. That's what I should have. Okay, now when we go to do this calculation, we're starting with three significant figures. Our answer then is going to have three significant figures. Okay, now this when you grab your calculator. I always suggest trying these on your calculator as you do them. Don't just look at the way someone solved it, because sometimes you'll have to make sure that your calculator functions and the way that you perform them will give you the right answer. So here we have 3.52 times 1, so 3.52 divided by 26.98. 3 divided by 26 is a number less than 1, so you should get a number less than 1 in your calculator. And when you do it, to three significant figures, the answer I get is 0 0.130. So this is my answer. We have less than 26 grams, so we have less than a mole. We have 0 0.130 moles of aluminum. All right, let's do another one while we're on a roll here. The next problem says calculate the number of atoms in 36 grams of carbon. All right, now what's the central unit that we've been studying this chapter so far? The central unit of counting for chemists is the number we can convert grams to moles, and we can convert moles to number of atoms. Let's keep this in mind. So we're given grams. It says calculate the number of atoms in 36 grams of carbon. So I'm given grams of carbon. What do I want to calculate? I want to calculate number of atoms. Can I go from grams to atoms in one conversion factor? I'll tell you the answer. The answer is no. Every conversion you, you, you do in this chapter and in the, pre, in the next few chapters, you're always going to go through the mole. The mole is the central unit of chemistry. So if you're given some unit besides a mole, you're always going to want to convert into the mole and then convert out of the mole if you have a different unit to calculate. So we're going to go through the mole. So actually, this is going to be a two-step <clears throat> um, conversion problem because we're given grams. Our central unit, all the unit conversion factors all go through the mole, so we're going to go from grams to moles and then from moles to numbers. When grams is mass, how do we go from mass to moles? What's the conversion factor we use? The conversion factor for mass to moles is molar mass. So we're going to use the molar mass found on the periodic table for carbon. All right, from there, how do I go from moles to numbers? The number of atoms per mole is Avogadro's number. So I'm going to use molar mass and Avogadro's number to solve this problem. So let's set it up. All right, follow your solution map. We're starting with grams of carbon. We know how many we have. 
we have 36.0 grams of carbon. All right, I've got grams of carbon up. I'm going to put a grams of carbon down. Every conversion factor should be related around a mole. So here are my first conversion factor. This is my molar mass. This conversion factor I just set up. One mole of carbon is how many grams of carbon? Well, every atom weighs a different amount. So if you go on the periodic table, you'll see there's 12.01 grams of carbon for every mole. So I've got a grams up, got a grams down. I've just converted grams of carbon or mass of carbon to moles of carbon. Is that what I want? Mm, not completely. I also want to convert my grams of carbon and finally to my atoms of carbon. So how do I go from moles to atoms? Well, this is Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number says there's for every one mole of carbon, how many atoms is that? And I'm going to probably go out to my box here. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. All right. So now I've got a mole up and a mole down. My final unit that I have is atoms. So once you get that unit you want on top, you stop. So now let's look at the calculation we have. We have 36 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Remember my rule about numbers with exponents. Always put them in parentheses in your calculator, all right? And I would typically always put the entire, if you're going to put everything in at once, put the entire numerator in parentheses. So when you punch this in, you go parentheses, 36.0 times parentheses, 6.022 times 10 23rd, close parentheses, close parentheses again, divided by 12.01. All right. What number do you get out? Three significant figures, because that's what we start with. The number I get out is 1.81 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Now, does that answer make sense? That's the, the real question. It should. The answer should make sense. Notice that one mole of carbon is 12 grams. Well, how many grams did you have? We started with 36. About how many moles is that? Well, let's count grams of carbon per mole, 12, 24, 36. That's about three moles. <clears throat> if one mole is 6.022 at times 10 23rd atoms, what's 6 times 3? 18, or 1.8 times 10 to the 24th atoms. So it makes sense that we have a lot of atoms. All right. See if you can do the next one by yourself. It's very similar to the one we actually just did. Um... I'll give you the answer. It's 104 grams. Let's see if you can do that one on your own. What is the mass of 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of lead? In this question, you're going to go from numbers of atoms to moles to grams. So instead of going molar mass of Avogadro's number, you're going to go Avogadro's number to convert numbers of atoms to moles. And then from moles to mass, you're going to use molar mass. So you'll do the same two conversion factors, but just in the opposite order. See if you can get 104 grams.